I hope that that gives you reassurance that it's not just you. No, everyone is having the worst time of their life, but trust me, you can and you will become a CA or a CPA or whatever your dream is. <laughs> Revolution gang if you haven't subscribed yet then make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution and why you guys already know so you're gonna say it with me for the good times for the vibe say it with me now for the babies <laughs> so today I am joined by the intelligent the beautiful, the amazing, the inspiring, the hardworking. She's blushing, guys. <laughs> I am joined by Nogutle, guys, um, and I'm not going to speak for her. She's going to introduce herself. But the reason why I am joined by this lovely lady today is because we're going to do a video today talking about the difference between a CPA certified public accountant and a CASA which is Chartered Accountant South Africa. So of course you know I'm going to be talking about the CPA side as I'm going to be practicing in America. So guys I realized that I actually didn't take time to introduce you to who I am because I know there are some people who are new to the channel so welcome subscribe and make sure you stay for the ride. My name is Benita Danielle. I am a YouTuber slash accountant. I am South African and born and raised. I'm Zonga. However I am currently working in America. I came to America and did my undergraduate degree here uh, for four years and then I did my master's for one year and I'm currently working at a firm in America. So this year I earned my master's in business administration which had a focus in supply chain and last year I got my BA in accounting uh, summa cum laude. I have also passed all of my CPA exams, the four exams mentioned in this video and I wrote my last exam in July of this year got my results sometime in August and so now I am on the road of becoming a licensed CPA so I just need to get my work experience and then I'm good to go to be a certified public accountant and I currently work at a big four firm I do strategy and transactions so that's got to do with mergers acquisitions that's what I do but I'm also like I also I'm also an auditor but not full-time so I do work as an auditor but that's more CPA seasonal but my full-time job is working in strategy and transactions so those are my qualifications um, and that is my job and of course I'm also a content creator okay thank you guys let's proceed and Nogutle is going to be talking about the CA side because she is a CASA for the babies hey guys my name is Nogutle Kumalo and as Benita has said I am a qualified chartered accountant of South Africa Super excited to be here. I also happen to be a YouTuber myself. So if you want part two of this video, because we're not going to be covering the same things, make sure you do check out the other side on my channel, which is just my name, Nogute Kumalo, and you'll be like, you'll, you'll literally find your home. It's a second home, okay? If you like Benita, you're going to like my stuff. As we've already mentioned, I am a chartered accountant of South Africa. I actually recently qualified this year, so it's still exciting and a bit like I don't know I'm a bit uncomfortable saying it because it's like oh my word really uh, and that's because it was a seven-year journey so it's like finally mama I've arrived okay but anyways I actually studied my undergrad at UCT uh, which is one of the top universities in South Africa and then I did my postgrad at UCT as well and thereafter I moved to Johannesburg to do my articles uh, my articles was like the work experience portion and I did that at a big four firm um, worked there for three years three hard grueling but rewarding years um, and then after that I qualified 
Oh, and I keep saying UCT, but like just in case you guys are not aware, UCT is University of Cape Town. And then after qualifying, my company gave me the opportunity to go and work internationally. So I did a secondment in the US. Um, I initially chose Philadelphia, but I landed up in the New York office, no complaints. Um, and then now I'm actually currently doing a second secondment in Melbourne, Australia. So that's been really exciting. Uh, so if you are looking for a bit of international exposure and you didn't like get a lucky chance to go and study abroad like Benita it's okay there are opportunities you will get your chance to do that terminal a stuff so so you know keep pushing eventually things level out so now I want us to actually talk about being the road to becoming a CASA versus the road to becoming a CPA so we're just gonna be doing bullet style points we're just gonna be giving you guys the facts now head on over to Nokusha's channel tomorrow she's gonna post a video where she where we really go into depth about the comparison between the two so here just giving you the facts. But if you want an in-depth conversation and analysis about it so you can see the difference and weigh your options, head on over to her channel. She's gonna have the video up tomorrow. I'm also going to link it in my description so we can watch it. So let's get started and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna start us off on this one. How do you become a CPA? So for you to become a CPA, a certified public accountant, it actually differs from state to state. So each American state has their own state board of accountancy and the requirements differ based on that state board of accountancy. So I lived in Pennsylvania and I decided to basically get my, my CPA exams under Pennsylvania. So for you to become a CPA, first of all, you need to meet certain education requirements and so you have to write four CPA exams I'll go into detail about the exams but for you to write those exams you need educational requirements or these prerequisites to meet so you can qualify to take those exams so the first thing that you need is you need to have a baccalaureate or higher education degree from a university that is accredited you're not limited to which schools many schools actually do teach um, an accredited curriculum as long as the uh, uh, curriculum is accredited that works for you okay so it's not like select schools that you have to go to so you have to have an undergraduate degree and then you have to have 150 semester hours in general so of whatever you need 150 school credit hours now normally your regular undergraduate degree actually doesn't give you those 150 semester hours so that's where um, people end up getting a master's degree because you can choose to just do a random course to get your 150 because school doesn't get you 150 and get your 150 points but some people opt to then just get a master's degree because hey I get my 150 points and also I've got a master's degree so two birds one stone the numbers here I want to specify they differ from state to state so some states is 150 semester hours others is 120 etc etc then you need 27 semester hours of accounting courses and you need 24 semester hours of business related courses and so what actually that means is you don't actually need to have an undergraduate degree in accounting for you to qualify to take the CPA exam. That's not a requirement. So you can find that you have a, a major in art, but in that art, you also happen to take um, some courses. Some schools require you to take, you know, you must get a little bit of history, a little bit of, I went to a liberal arts school and liberal arts requires that you do a little bit of history, a little bit of math, a little bit of this, a little bit of this to end up getting your degree. So if you go to a liberal arts school, for instance, and you end up doing, you have to do a little bit of art, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of math, accounting, economics, you can actually find that you majored in art and yet you can still qualify to take your CPA exam. But again, that depends on your curriculum that you took in your school. So these are the educational requirements that you need in order to qualify to take the exam. When it comes to doing the actual application, there's a few things that you need. So you need to come with your transcript to obviously show what, what, um, what you studied and what your grades are. Although I don't believe, I may be wrong, I don't believe your grades in school actually dictate whether or not you can take the exam. They just want to see that you took and passed certain courses for you to be able to take the exam. Um, in Pennsylvania in particular, you need a reference form. So this reference form, it needs to be from one uh, CPA, Certified Public Accountant, and two non-CPAs. And then some states have a residency requirement and some states have a citizen requirement. So there's certain states I couldn't take the exam because I'm not a citizen of America. 
and there's certain states I can't take the exam because I didn't live there long enough. So Pennsylvania did not have a citizenship requirement and actually didn't have a residency one, but other states did. Hence, I just did mine in Pennsylvania. And of course, each application does come with an application fee as well. But to summarize that again, you need those education requirements to qualify you to take the exam and then you need to do um, those forms to qualify you or to, in order to apply to take the exam. Right. Now we get into the actual exam structure. So for the CPA exam, historically it's been this way. However, in 2024, it's actually changing. So I'm going to give you a brief into what how I did it, the exam structure I had and those who are taking it now and before me versus what's to come. It's for uniform exams um, and it is auditing and attestation, that's odd, and it's financial accounting and reporting, that's far. It's, it's uh, business environment and concepts, that's BEC, and then it is regulation, that's REG. So audit and attestation teaches you about how to run an audit engagement, all the terms, basically everything you need to know about being an auditor is in the audit exam. Then BEC has IT, finance, um, managerial accounting, um, that's BEC. And then FAR is your real accounting. That's your debit, credit, your journal entries, your ledgers, your, yeah, that's the, that's, yeah, that's the heart of accounting basically is FAR. And then regulation is your laws, your taxes, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's reg. So that's the structure that has historically been there. And that's the structure that I had. And how I took the exams was I took audit and I got 78. Then I took BEC, I failed, I got 64. And then I did it again, I got 83. Then I did FAR, I got 85. And I did REG, I got 85. So I only failed one exam and had to rewrite it. Sorry, yeah. what do you mean you got 64 and you failed? So I got a, I, I wrote my exam and I got 64 and I failed because the pass mark is 75%. So, <laughs> Now, in terms of the exams, the order you can take them, you can actually take them in any order. They don't dictate to you what comes first, what comes last. As long as you take all four, you can take them in any order. And you can also take them any time during the year, literally. As long as your testing site has a date, you can take an exam today and tomorrow. And you take them on different days. No one is, you can do it same day if you want, but you do not have to do all of the exams on the same day or anything like that. However, from the date that you pass your first exam, from that exam, you have 18 months to pass the rest of the exams. If 18 months go by and you haven't passed all four exams, that first one you passed falls off as if you never wrote it and you have to rewrite it. So let's say you took uh, two exams and you passed two of them. Then I get better, it's tough. You've been failing to pass the other two. If 18 months comes and you haven't passed the other two, that first one you wrote falls off. Now it's as if you only passed one and you now have three more to write. So that's what I mean by the 18 month timeline. And you have to pay for each exam and I'm going to put on the screen how much it costs both in rands and in dollars, but you have to pay for each of those exams. And another thing is, so for these exams, it is self-study. You can go and look for someone to teach you how to do it or whatever, but they don't provide you any materials you go pick up and you have to to say that's how you study it's self-study there's many companies that actually provide software and material to help you study i signed a contract with a big four firm to go work for them and so because i signed with them they then pay for my software material which costs uh, three thousand dollars which is roughly i think fifty seven thousand so they paid for that study material for me to be able to self-study each exam consists of simulations, which is basically like a case study. They'll give you a bunch of um, information to open. You have to analyze it and answer multiple questions. It's a case study. Then it also has multiple choice questions. And BEC is unique because BEC is the only exam that has essays. You have three exam. You have three essays you need to write in BEC, and it's the only one that had that. So I mentioned to you prior that the exam structure is actually changing. So what's happening now is you're still going to have FAR, you're still going to have audit, and you're still going to have reg. However, BEC is now falling away. The three that you still have are called cores, and then you're going to have to choose one discipline. And then lastly, 
I'm almost done. Now I'm just talking about license requirements. So now I'm at a point where I've officially done all four of my exams. So now I just need to do a few more things in order for me to officially have my license. So what is required for me for you to become a licensed CPA? Now I'm going to be talking about things specific to Texas. Um, Texas requires that you write a, uh, an ethics exam and then there's something called the Texas Rules of Professional Conduct and it's an open book exam and you need to get 85% to pass that exam. And then in terms of work experience, you only need, and this is according to the Texas State Board of Accountancy website, it may change, but as I've recently went to go check it out, you only need one year of work experience under a under the supervision of a qualified a certified public accountant. Once you become a CPA, in order for you to maintain your license, you need to do something called Continuing Professional Education, CPE. And that is 120 hours uh, for a three year period. So yeah guys, that is pretty much, I was that was bullet points. Again, we're gonna do analysis in Nokusha's video, but that is the journey of becoming a CPA, Certified Public Accountant in America. And I just wanna mention it differs from state to state, but that is the requirement. So now I am finally going to shut up after talking for so long, and I'm gonna get no, I'm gonna let Nokusha talk to us about how you become a CASA. So my good sis, take it away. All right, guys, so to become a CASA, pretty similar to what Benita said, but also a lot of differences. For you to become a chartered accountant, you will study for a minimum of seven years. So if you're trying to be an, a chartered accountant because you want to study medicine for that long, think again, it's kind of the same number of years. Um, so seven years in total, you've got three years in your undergrad degree. Um, and this is usually a specified degree. So um, you will be doing like your accounting, your business courses and all of that. Um, and then after that, you do a post-grad diploma in accounting. This is an advanced diploma. So it's not really considered an honors because for it to be an honors, you need to have done a thesis. Um, and because you don't really write much in your post-grad year, it's, it's, it doesn't qualify as an honors. So it's a post-grad diploma in accounting. Other universities will call it CTA. All right, cool. So once you're done with your three years undergrad plus your postgrad diploma, which is just one year, you are then ready to go and work. So for us, it's really important that when you're choosing a school, you choose the right school because you don't want to find yourself having studied for four years and actually realize that your school is not accredited. Um, and basically you will never, ever, ever become a chartered accountant, no matter how much you beg, scream, cry, kick, like it's not going to happen. So make sure that you check that your university is accredited with SICA. SICA is our professional body um, and they basically regulate how we operate as chartered accountants. Back to universities, another thing is you always have to have a degree um, when you're doing accounting, so a degree in accounting. Um, I know some people will go to these colleges or like a Technicon and they'll do a diploma in accounting. So usually guys, if you do a diploma in accounting or you do accounting in a in a small college that isn't accredited by SICA, you will most likely become a bookkeeper um, and this is when you process like accounting invoices uh, and you book to your CRJ and your CPJ and all of that um, but you will actually not become a chartered accountant um, and you'll also not become an auditor and because being a chartered accountant is still quite a critical skill in South Africa a lot of companies will actually be willing to fund you so do make sure that you do search for like funding opportunities um, and obviously it's best if you have really great marks and by really great I mean show that you actually did try your best obviously they will take certain things into account so if you're previously disadvantaged or you studied in the rural area they know that maybe it might not be that easy for you to get a distinction in English um, but when they see your maths mark they can see that this person clearly has potential um, so they will actually invest in you there's like a bursary called Tutuga which is actually my brother's name but it means uplift um, so they they actually don't really want much from you they're just trying to make sure that they are uplifting people like you and me black people who were previously disadvantaged in a country like South Africa and then now once you're done with university and guys honestly I always say university is probably the toughest part of this entire journey um, and if you don't believe me ask how many people you start off with and how many actually reach the end and thing is it's not like it's a sudden drop off no people will actually drop off in stages and it sucks because obviously you start off the you start off your university career with so 
many people, so many friends, and by the time you get to the end, you guys have more than halved, you know. Um, and it's not because people have given up. Sometimes they're in different years um, or they're in different universities completely. So it is a tough journey. Um, and if you are in it, like, I I'm telling you, it is tough. So I hope that that gives you reassurance that it's not just you. No, everyone is having the worst time of their life. But trust me, once you get through university, things do tend to uh, level out a bit. You kind of hit a plateau where you can catch your breath, you know, and breathe. Um, but just before you can catch your breath, you actually have to do a board course. Um, for us in South Africa, we have two board courses. We have one just before you start working. So you still need to, you know, keep your socks up. And then after that, you can breathe because the second board course is actually only going to be at the end of your second year. When I say second year, for South Africa, you have three years of articles. So you write a board course right at the beginning of your articles. And this is just a way for Psyker to make sure that all universities are still keeping the same standard. Everybody writes the same exam beginning of the year, always at the same time. And then if you pass, you're good. And if you're not, and if you didn't pass, it's okay. You'll get another chance in six months time. Anyways, so, so for the board courses, the first one is usually quite okay. Uh, and the pass marks are usually quite decent. You know, it's usually up in the eighties. Um, and if you really work hard and you sacrifice your December sometimes and your January, you should be fine. Companies are actually very supportive also. So they'll actually pay for your board course and you'll actually have some preparation. So you'll have like a board course, uh, little, little preparation pack that they give you but I didn't get this because I chose a different board course so all they gave us were books and it was like peace see yourself but that was fine ITC which is the first board exam usually good so with the board exams the first one is four hour papers over two days and there are two papers a day so essentially you write for 16 hours in a two day period these four papers are split two per day and in each paper, you don't know what's going to come up. So it's not like, oh, the first paper will be financial reporting, then the next one will be um, tax, then the next one auditing. It doesn't work like that. You will write a combination of all four subjects in each exam. So you cannot spot. You can't say, oh my word, let me just focus on tax today because I'm writing that. Um, and then tomorrow I'll catch up on financial reporting. It's the second board course that you do when you're almost done with your articles that actually usually takes people out and this is because this is not a written exam and it's not about how well you know your books how well you know journals and all of that this is more about are you a professional are you ready to be a chartered accountant are you ready to answer to management can you give board of directors solid information when they have queries so for those type of exams it's not really much about debits and credits it's about can you think on your toes? Yes, you'll have time to prepare, but there'll always be an element of surprise. And that's actually where they prove. That's where they see your actual professional competence. So that's why, guys, the second board course is usually the tough one, but it is still doable as long as you put your head down. And luckily for the second board course, you actually have to have a preparation. So you can't just rock up and come and write this board exam. You have to go through a board course. Um, and these people train you throughout the year, throughout your second year. So you'll be working and studying. Anyways, guys, so when you are doing these boards your company will pay for your first attempt of the board exam so for both the first itc as well as the apc they will pay for it and this is quite a big amount i know like itc was about i think what it was six thousand rand just to come right and another six thousand rand if you wanted the board packs like the preparation and then for apc i think it was about eight thousand rand i can't remember um you see that's that's why i don't remember because i didn't pay for it my company did however if you don't pass in the first attempt, unfortunately, your company will not pay for you again, even in terms of leave days. So your company will give you more leave days when it's your first attempt because they want to give you all the support they can. But if you struggle to pass with many leave days, they shorten the leave days. And it's like, if you couldn't pass ITC with 30 days of leave, how are you going to pass it with two weeks? And then the next time you write, if you're going to do a third attempt, they give you one week. If you're going to write it four times, they give you three days. So it's like your best time to do it is the first time. Even with this, guys, when I'm talking about number of attempts, for us, as soon as you are able to write, um, it counts. So if you have done your CTA and you decide to not write your first board course for whatever reason, it counts as a fail. 
even if you didn't step into the building it's a fail so right and then once all of this fluff is done and you are ready to qualify as a chartered accountant you have to register with Saika um, and that's why you guys might see a lot of people writing eligible to register as a chartered accountant this just means that they have satisfied all the requirements they just haven't paid the professional body the fee it's an annual fee I think um, when we joined when I joined I had to pay like a joining fee and a, um, an annual membership I think it was about 15,000 and ran um, which is quite steep like randomly to pay um, but a lot of people are just waiting for their employers to pay for it because your employer will most likely pay for the subscription because if you want a CASA in your company then pay the CASA money um, but essentially even when you qualify as a chartered accountant and you get your nice fancy certificate you still need to continue to develop your skills um, and this is what we call CPD continuous professional development so quite similar to uh, the American one um, um, and I'm not exactly sure about the hours, but there are hours. I just know I keep doing these e-learnings because I'm like, hmm, they can't catch me slipping, not after I work so hard. And then you can also attend webinars. And basically, guys, this is just to make sure that as a chartered accountant, your knowledge stays refreshed. But anyways, guys, that is what it takes for you to become a chartered accountant in South Africa. It's a long journey. It's grueling, but it's worth it. Whether you're doing it in SA or doing it in America, it's not going to be an easy journey. But I want to assure you that it is worth it. I believe in you the same way I believe in myself. Um, guys, if you have any more questions, please comment down below. I will be happy to answer your questions below. Any more video ideas, comment down below. If you have any video ideas for Nokia, comment in her video, comment in her video, show love to her video, check out her video, check out mine. But apart from that, that's it for today, guys. I hope you like this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. And I will be back with more videos. Any questions, any comments, comment down below. And again, and I just want to re-emphasize the fact that guys it is possible not easy but it is possible and if this is your dream go for it with both hands both feet run towards it you can and you will become a CA or a CPA or whatever your dream is and your desire is that which is your passion your destiny chase after it with both hands thanks guys <laughs>